Hey guys, it's Liv here, bringing you guys a top 5 video. We're discussing the top 5 Ubers that are going to be allowed in this BBL season. If you guys do enjoy, of course, leave a like down below, comment, subscribe if you're new, uh, and let me know your list down below. With that being said, I do want to just get right into the video. So, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, BBL is the Ubers Draft League that I run, and we do have a few bands. Um, I'm going to go over them quickly, but they'll also be on your screen now, being Shadowrex, uh, Cal Calyrex Shadow Rider, Eternatus, Kyogre, Mewtwo, Duskmane Necrozma, Zacian, and Zacian Crowned. So anything that is not one of those seven Pokemon is fair game to be listed in this video. I do also want to mention that this video was a bit of a last second idea because I couldn't, I still can't find an Uber's Wi-Fi battle. So I don't know how much editing there will be besides that point, but I'm going to try and at least do some stuff. So just figured I would forewarn with that. Uh, with that being said, let's get into number five, which we have Magirna. So Magirna is a Mon that while it is a pretty typical usually like allowing OU for a bit and then you know people took a while to ban from draft leagues, Magirna is still a very threatening Pokemon and I think in this format it actually provides a lot more personally to a draft. Being the fact that it has a Steel Fairy typing, which if you look at a lot of the top Mons, stuff like Xerneas and Aveltal in BBL both get checked very easily by Magirna. It soft check Zekrom, though Zekrom probably has of the dragons one of the easier times of getting around it besides Rayquaza. Uh, but it also does check stuff like Urquaza, it checks Hiram's, especially Hiram Black, uh, it checks stuff like Palkia, it, keep in mind, these are all checks, because obviously like a Specs Palkia could run Earth Power and that could destroy it, but against any sort of Palkia at least that gets predicted around right, Magirna can definitely take advantage, and that's to say for a lot of the mods in the format, especially certain Pokemon, like as I said, Xerneas and Aveltal, against Xerneas especially, it's basically an auto win. Uh, so Magirna does definitely provide itself a fair bit of really good matchups, and that's just talking about the Ubers alone. We know how good Magirna is in standard, obviously, just from anyone who did play in, in Magirna allowing draft leagues in the beginning. Uh, Magirna is definitely a force to be reckoned with. 65 speed is really solid as well, especially in the Wi-Fi setting, where you could shift gear up, and you outpace a decent amount. That still does obviously work in standard draft leagues as well, but especially in Wi-Fi, the speed tier goes a decent way further in my opinion. Magirna also has options like Calm Mind to set up, as well as its ability Soul Heart, which any time a Pokemon dies, which unlike Moxie, this is even just stuff like Hazards or Weather, Magirna will get a special attack for you. So you can't even switch in a sack on Hazards to try and bring in something to kill Magirna, because it's just going to get another boost. I mean, you can still do that technically, but you can't do that into a slower mod because it's only going to take it worse. So Magirna definitely does have a lot of ways to take advantage of the opponent. On top of also its phenomenal coverage, most Steel types don't really get as good coverage as Magirna does, especially not specially. So Magirna gets Flare Cannon for with a Fairy option, gets uh, Flash Cannon, which I didn't even have room to list just because Magirna's move pool is so wide, but Magirna does have Dual Stab of course, has Bolt Beam coverage, it has Focus Blast for Steels, Store Power is great, it has tons of setup with stuff like Calm Mind, Shift Gear, and Iron Defense to pull off a Store Power set. Uh, Heart Swap is great for potential other setup mons, stuff like Xerneas especially, this is how you really get around Xerneas teams. Uh, Pain Split is great for recovery, Volt Switch is great for momentum, and there's so many more options. If you look at Magirna's move pool, you will find something for a matchup. The biggest issue that Magirna has from listing it higher on this list, I would say, is two different things. One is the speed, which while it is mitigated by Trick Room, there are also better Trick Room Breakers in the tier. Stuff like Calyrex Ice, for example, is a better Trick Room Breaker. And also just in general, a lot of non-Ubers could also potentially underpace. However, Magirna does definitely have Trick Room going for it, as it is still a very viable strat. On top of also the fact that it's not fast enough to outpace certain Scarfers with uh, with a shift gear up, so it can definitely get picked off. And also just the not reliable recovery. Pain Split is still not bad, but Magirna also, like just looking at Magirna's potential status options, it doesn't really have a lot of status options. Uh, Magirna misses out on- actually, Magirna does have rest, okay, I thought Magirna missed out on rest. Um, but regardless, so it does still miss out on a reliable recovery option. So, that definitely does hinder it, whereas in comparison to other fat mons like Aveltal, Lugia, Ho-Oh, they all have their own recovery. So, it definitely does stop Magirna from going up higher on this list. However, for the 22-point tier, which is the biggest thing, I am scaling this off of per cost. So, for the 22-point tier, I think that Magirna is certainly a worthwhile Pokemon in the BBL Wi-Fi format. Now, we're gonna get into the number 4 pick. Which, the number 4 pick will definitely surprise some people, because Smon doesn't go a lot in BBL, unlike Magirna, which goes really early every season, but every time this Pokemon goes, it's a pretty much guaranteed playoff performance, with the worst season being a top 8 cut, with two also quarterfinal cut, uh, two also semifinal cuts, and then a champion run as well, being Groudon. 
So Groudon is a very terrifying uber in this format in my opinion, with a really solid physical defense stat. Not a lot of ubers actually really can check physical defensive ubers. So Groudon being able to not only be a physically defensive uber that can tear through a lot of more spadef uber checks, but also able to take hits from mons like Zekrom for example and Marshadow really well, that really plays into Groudon's viability in my opinion. Also has a really solid speed tier at 90, which to be fair is average among the ubers. That's an extremely average speed tier. However, with options like Rock Polish in its arsenal, Groudon does have a lot of options to mitigate this. On top of as well, if you want to get a more consistent uh, speed control, you do have T-Wave, which while it does miss 10% of the time, it does also stop even if you have to switch out Groudon, it will still keep that speed control in check. Groudon also has options to check other setup options with stuff like Roar, for example, or even just like Bulk Up and Sword Stance to potentially break through other defensive setup options. So it does definitely have a lot going for it. As I mentioned as well, Groudon's probably the best rocker in the format, for the BBL format at least. Uh, really, really solid defensive and offensive rocker even because it can pressure and force a lot of switches. Groudon also has really good coverage both physically and specially. Precipice Blaze is a really, really destructive ground option, especially when you need that little bit of a boost over Earthquake. However, Earthquake does still work. You also have stuff like Fire Punch, which especially with Drought, that and Overheat even can be really destructive against a lot of teams. You have Solar Beam to get around Waters, however you also have T-Punch to get around Waters, which is really cool. Stone Edge is great because just general Edge Quake coverage is really nice. Though you have Rock Slide as well if you don't want to miss as often. So Groudon has a ton going for it in my opinion. I think the biggest hindrance to Groudon would, for one, be the fact that it's not a Fire Ground. I think that Fire Ground, uh, and obviously Primal Ground does benefit from this as well with Desolate Land. However, I think the Fire Ground would have been able to take advantage of a lot of stuff. Like, for example, it would have been a nice Xerneas check, as we see in uh, in Ubers. And this gen as well, without Hidden Powers, I think that Typing would have went a lot further, in my opinion. On top of that as well, I think if Groudon maybe had a bit more spiff, and even if it just cut like 10 from speed and 10 more in spiff, I think it would have helped it a lot. Uh, as well as maybe also just making it a bit more especially offensive. Something like Palkia, for example, has the 120 in its lower offense and 150 attack. So I think Groudon could have maybe benefited from something like that. However, I do think that Groudon is still a really good uber, and it's a really consistent one on that too. So I don't think that any team would be missing out on picking up on a number four slot. Now coming in at our number three slot, we have Marshadow. So Marshadow, I'll be honest, I originally didn't plan on listing Marshadow. I actually planned on listing potentially Xerneas here. However, I think that Marshadow sort of snuck in right at the end, and I realized that I was not only overvaluing Xerneas, especially at a 24-point setting, but I also was undervaluing Marshadow, I think. So Marshadow is still a really destructive uber, and while I do think that the next two options are miles better than it, I do think that Marshadow has always had a really solid place in BBL, and I think that its typing as well provides for that, especially in this sort of format with the Wi-Fi setting. So Marshadow, on first glance, Definitely has, in my opinion, the least impressive stat line out of any of the Ubers that we mentioned in this top 5. However, with Marshadow's typing, that goes significantly further, on top of its ability as well being Technician. So Technician helps a lot with options like Rock Tomb and also with Shadow Sneak, because Rock Tomb is able to hit as hard as, uh, as Rock Slide is, however it's a guaranteed speed drop as well, which is honestly huge. Not only that, but in terms of Comparing the two, Rock Tomb has slightly better accuracy than Rock Slide would have, being a 5% difference. And actually, it's harder than Rock Slide, my bad. Um, so that's obviously really, really good when checking stuff like a Veltal, for example, which, well, you definitely cannot counter a Veltal. You could certainly soft check it with Rock Tomb at least, which is really nice because a Veltal is probably one of the best switches to this. So this Pokemon is capable of getting around checks for sure. Just it does depend on the set because obviously like a Bandit set can definitely get switched in around pretty easily. So, I think definitely the biggest issue that had me from listing Marshadow further, because while in, in a standard format, Marshadow is phenomenal. Um, in terms of like a standard Ubers format, Marshadow will claim kills against pretty much every team. It's pretty easy to get two kills plus with this Pokemon. I think in draft, when you know what sort of set is probably best against you, it can definitely be a lot easier, in my opinion, to prep around Marshadow than it would be on like a general ladder setting. So, I think that that definitely does play a bit into checking Marshadow. Um, and making certain sets like Band a bit less viable. However, Band and Marshadow is still a threat, and it will still definitely 2 a kill a lot of Pokemon, if not Oko. So I think that Marshadow definitely is still really damning. Uh, stuff like Spectral Thief as well basically invalidates any sort of setup, and even Scarf Marshadow is a very viable bring because of Spectral Thief. Because you can always outpace a plus one Dragon Dance Mon and steal its boost, and then you're getting a plus one attack, plus one speed on top of your Scarf, and you're basically unrevengeable at that point. 
which is a really scary thing to think about with a Pokemon that has such an unresisted stab combination. It's very, very hard to find something that can actually switch in. So, Marshadow as well has coverage for some of the best Pokemon in the format. Obviously, stuff like Spectral Thief is going to nail Lunala, stuff like Rockium, as I mentioned, for Veltal. Uh, Ice Punch is going to be great against Zygarde and Zekrom and all those other dragons, which half the format is. Close Combat is just a generally unresisted option against almost everything in the format. And everything it does resist it for the most part besides... Um, actually, yeah, everything it does resist it, actually, is at least taking super effective from Poltergeist or Spectral Thief. So this Pokemon is definitely very good. And not only that, but it has options like Bulk Up to even just set up, or will o -Wisp if you really want to catch something on a Switch. That could be nice for like an, a Groudon, for example, if you want to burn it on a Switch. Because Groudon is definitely a better Fizz Def check. Same as like a Zygarde as well, you could burn it on a Switch. And you can even go for Endeavor if you're about to die to something. So you can definitely make a lot work with this Pokemon. I do think it's very good. However, as I mentioned, the stat line does definitely hinder it. Because while it is certainly good, compared to other Mons in this format, especially the higher options, they're just so much more broken stat lines in my opinion. On top of as well, I just think that Marshadow in general just hasn't had as consistent a performance as these last two Pokemon, so we'll see what happens. Coming in at our number two slot, we have none other than Lunala. So Lunala is another ghost type. Ghost types, as you can see, are very good in this format. Uh, it's a ghost psychic type, which is also another really good type in this format, being psychic, uh, with a really solid speed stat at base 97, in a format where webs are prevalent, this is a very, very good thing for Lunala because webs are going to really, really make this Pokemon a lot better. On top of that as well, Shadow Shield is basically multi-scale for anyone who isn't aware of what Shadow Shield does, which means that this Pokemon is going to be able to take hits ridiculously well, even for super effective hits, keep in mind. Which this Pokemon is four times weak to Dark and to Ghost. However, that's really not a big deal because of the fact that you could run berries and then on top of that as well as Shadow Shield helps you really, really get far against a lot of things. Uh, not only that, but Lunala also does have a phenomenal coverage pool. It's so good I cannot list most of the options here, but it gets coverage with very, very options with Moonblast. It has Ghost, obviously, with its stab with Moonguise Beam, Shadow Ball, and Hex. You have Focus Blast. You have Psychic and Psy Shock for its other stab. You have Bolt Beam coverage. You have Heat Wave. You have Nightshade even for support. So it definitely has, has a lot going for it. Not only that, but it's triple status in Willow, Roost, uh, Willow, T-Wave, and Toxic, as well as to obviously play into that hex support option as well as it has roost and roar as nice options so it can also recover it has moonlight i guess as well but roost is just objectively better in my opinion and then roar obviously to help face stuff out though it does also have haze uh lunala also has some good setup options as well with lunala getting access to calm mind which helps it just take hits significantly better um so so lunala definitely has a lot going for it uh, Lunala also can teleport out, which is phenomenal because teleport obviously gaining some slow momentum is really huge for this Pokemon. So even if a dark does switch in on you, you can teleport out into your fairy and just try and pressure the team. So Lunala is honestly a really good Pokemon. Not only that, but Lunala is able to actually clear hazards with Defog. So again, this Pokemon has pretty much everything you'd want and Magic Code as well to even bounce back hazards. So there's really nothing that Lunala can't do, in my opinion. Uh, I guess the one big thing is that I guess Lunala in terms of its physical attack set, it doesn't have a lot to take advantage of it, it's really just stabs. But that's such a minor thing because you're gonna really be able to click special most games and auto win anyway. And I think that's the really the only thing placing us behind our number one Pokemon would be two things. One, I think that the number one Pokemon checks as an anti-meta as an anti-meta option better. Uh two, the number one Pokemon has a slightly better speed stat, and three, the number one Pokemon can actually sufficiently run mixed very, very well or even just physical or special, no matter what it wants to go with. And then number one Pokemon being Eveltal. So Eveltal has a slightly better speed set than, Evol than Lunala, being a base 99 speed Pokemon. Uh, this Pokemon also does have a, oh, I forgot to change the typing, but it's Dark Flying. Um, sorry about that, guys. Uh, it is a Dark Flying type, which does make it immune to webs as well. So that speed set will go a lot further in this format. Uh, being four, uh, being twice, two times per week to rock really is gonna matter because boots do exist in this format which help play into Eveltal's viability very well, because Eveltal doesn't even always need an item, which is great, because you can obviously run Leftovers, you can run Band, Specs, Scarf, you can run Assault Vest even. However, Boots is also a very free item on Eveltal, and it's not even going to cost you in a lot of matchups. With the Dark Aura ability, you're boosting off your Dark Stabs, which is really, really good for Eveltal, because of the fact that it's able to spam Dark so easily, even against Resist, uh, people think about Xerneas being able to spam berry moves, 
Dark Aura is just as good for dark moves, and stuff like Dark Pulse being able to flinch as well is really, really good for it. Knock Off as well in this arsenal is really good against a lot of mons, being able to knock off stuff like Opposing Boots, you can knock off Leftovers, Choice Items, etc. You Sucker Punch for priority, Tailwind as well for just general team utility, uh, Taunt for just stall breaking, along with Defog as well for, again, just removing hazards. Uh, this Pokemon has a lot on the utility aspect, but it also has really good coverage. Uh, it's signature move Oblivion Wing be able to do base 80 flying damage with no drawback, and not only that, but it recovers 75 of HP dealt, and just a better draining kiss with a really, really good offensive typing. On top of that as well, it has good coverage for stuff like steals with Focus Blast and Heat Wave. Uh, you have stuff like U-Turn from Momentum, so you're not going to be dead weight. Uh, this Pokemon in general is just really damning, and I don't know why leagues allow it, to be honest. It's obnoxiously fat, and to put it in perspective, this actually can check Scarf, Water Spout, Kyogre with an Assault Vest, so... As I said, that's a really, really just destructive hit, which while we don't allow Kyogre, it is still just a hit that you do need to keep in mind. And I think that's a really good metric to show just how broken this Pokemon is, because everyone thinks a Scarf Water Spout Kyogre is the most free win thing ever. And I certainly do agree. I think it's insanely obnoxious. But the fact this Pokemon can actually check it really well, I think it says a lot of how good this Pokemon actually is, in my opinion. Being able to knock off a Scarf, and then you're able to go for Oblivion Wing, and you've just then gotten off two hits on it, being able to really weaken Kyogre for later on. On top of that as well, uh, the Veltal does have really respectable bulk for such an offensive Pokemon. As we mentioned, dual offense is 131. You can run it however you want offensively, but you also have a 126, 95, 98 defensive spread, which is honestly really, really good for this typing. This typing is switching on stuff like Offensive Ghosts and Psychics, which this Pokemon has a lot of notable ones in this format, namely Lunala, of course, but there's also other ones like like Lugia, for example. You can switch it on stuff like Solgaleo. There's actually a lot less in the uh, in the Wi-Fi format, to be fair, but this typing does go a lot farther in the Showdown format, in my opinion, where you do gain access to switch into certain Arceus types as well. And even though this can switch into op or at least take hits from options like Groudon, for example, uh, you can take hits from a lot of the dragons. Really, just the only ones you can't would be like Zekrom, in my opinion, and then also the Kiram's. Uh, this thing again can definitely also check Marshadow really, really well. Not hard counter, but it can definitely check, which is really, really good because Marshadow is again one of the more destructive Pokemon. So the fact that this can really easily check number two and three on the list, I think, really says a lot about this Pokemon. So yeah, that's why we have the Veltal at number one. So what did you guys think of the list? Uh, let me know down below your thoughts. As I said, I scaled my list on just the viability per cost. Otherwise, I would have probably bumped out Groudon entirely. I would have went, and also Magirna entirely. I would have went with Xerneas next. And then I would have probably went with, I would have probably went with Ho-Oh as my fifth if I was doing just based on top five overall. If not Ho-Oh, then Zekrom. So uh, let me know your list down below. As I said, preferably on the BBL tiers. If you guys need the tier list, I'll link a tier list down below with a blank doc. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, leave a like down below. Comment, subscribe if you're new. Reminder, BBL draft analysis do go live this coming Monday, so one week from today. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that, and I will catch you guys later. Peace out, guys.